Okay, so this video is going to prepare you and make sure that you are ready for the Unit 4 test. There are five test objectives right here on this page. I want you to take a look at them. You can pause it if you want to write them down to go through some examples to make sure you know how to do each part. Um, there are five. I'm not going to read through all of those. I allow you to pause the video to save time. Okay, so the first learning um, target for the test is you must be able to multiply whole numbers by powers of 10 with and without exponents. So I have an example of 400 times 80 to show you the without the exponents. And the way we looked at this is to um, understand 4 times 8 first is 32. But we're times 100. We have 100 place and we have a tens place. We're timing 100 times a 10 which makes a thousand. So this becomes 32,000. To kind of understand why we see there's three zeros total in our factors and we have three zeros here as another pattern too. So pretty easy there I think. Um, understanding the patterns of zero and the powers of 10 rule without exponents. The next one is with exponents. So 56 times 10 to the first power, that just means we have 1 of 10. We have 110. So 56 times 10, first we want them to see that uh, 56 times 1 is 56. But that we know we're having a 10 there, so that gives us an extra 0. So 560. Now this is different. There's a different exponent here. We have 56 times 10 to the second power. That means we have two tens, so 100. So 56 times 1, once again, is 56. But now we're times in that by 100, which gives us our two zeros, which gives us 5,600. So you see from here to here, we added a zero. So these are very straightforward, basic, basic examples of skills students must be understanding and be able to do for the test. Learning target number two is being able to multiply multi-digit whole numbers fluently. And we have tons of strategies for this. I am going to go through the box strategy as quick as I can and hopefully um, not make the video too long for you. So this may be called the area model. This may be called place value sections. There's a lot of different names for it. We've been referring it to as the box or the place value section. So on the longest side, we put the bigger number, so 94. And then we cut off a chunk to represent our 4. And then on the shorter side, we put the smaller number in expanded form. We cut off that chunk to represent two ones. Now, 50 and 90 are the length and width of this rectangle, so that's going to be 9 times 5 is 45. But we're multiplying tens place by a tens place with 9 and 5, so that makes a, a hundred, 10 times 10, so we have 4,500 here, or 4,500. For our box here, we have 90 times 2. 9 times 2 is 18. We have 1, 0 because we're multiplying it by 90, which is in the tens place. And then over here, we have 4 times 50. 4 times 5 is 20. Then we had that 0, making it 200. And then this tiny square is 8. Now these are our four partial products, 4,500, 180, 200, and 8. So now what we're going to do is add them up from the largest to the smallest number. So 4,500, obviously our largest, then 200, 180, making sure you line up each place value in 8. Now when we add this up, we'll get a final product of... four thousand eight hundred and eighty eight that is a skill you must be able to do using any strategy you like as long as you get the right answer and you show your work alright so the third target is being able to multiply decimals 
by the powers of 10. The first one was multiplying whole numbers, now we're doing decimals. So in this example, we have 6 tenths times 10 to the first power. Well, when we're multiplying, we know the decimal is going to move to the right. The same amount of places, or the same amount of zeros we have. So if we have 1, 0, and 10, we know that this decimal is going to move to the right once making it 6. Now we have 6 tenths times 10 to the second power. So now we're still moving to the right because we're multiplying, but now we're moving 2 times, so 1, 2, making it 60. Going through this quickly because my video will not let me give much time, but I just want you to see the ideas and you can practice this with a parent. And I said, or for this last one, 3 and 8 tenths times 10 to the third power, exponent being 3, um, that's telling us 3 zeros. 10 to the third power means 10 times 10 times 10, or 1,000. So we know we have 3 zeros and 1,000, so we're going to go 1, 2, 3, and add a 0 there, add a 0 there. And that becomes 3,800. Okay? So practice this skill too. This one might be a little bit more challenging, but I would like you to review this, look at it, try some examples, have a parent check it. Let's go to the fourth learning target. Now this is multiplying decimal numbers. I just say to think of this, and I do a little thinking bubbles in class. Think of this as what? Well, we want to think of it as 61 times 75. So it's really the same learning target as I think number 2, our learning target number 2 for this unit. Solve 61 times 75. Like they're two whole numbers. Think of it like this as the decimals are gone. So now we can take the 5 ones and times it by the one above it. 5 times 1 is 5. And then we'll do the 6 and the the 5, or the 5 into the 6, making 30. Then we're done with the 5, because we went into each digit above it. Now, since we moved over to the 7, that's in the tens place, making that 70. So I have to represent that by putting my 0 on the placeholder. Now I have 7 times 1, which is 7. And 7 times 6, which is 42. And I can add 5, 7, 5, 4. And I'm going to rewrite this a little nicer up here. 4, 5, 7, 5. And now this is the important part. Now that we thought of this as whole numbers, well, there, well we know they're really not. There's two decimal places between our two factors. Therefore, we must have two decimal places in our answer. So I went 1, 2 and put it there for a final answer of 45 and 75 hundredths. Very similar to multiplying whole numbers. You just have to think about adding the decimal back in for your final answer. And our last learning target is to be able to use those skills in any way set up into a real world story problem. So for example, if each student collected 78 aluminum pop cans, let's consider that. Each student picked up 78 aluminum cans. And we have 24 students. How many cans did the class collect in all? So we know this is multiplication because we have 24 students who collected 78 cans each. And this will give us an answer of how many cans, setting it up this way. So, 8 times 4 is 32. Put our two ones down here at 310. 8 times 2 plus 3 is 19. And I like to cross that out and showing I'm done with it. And I also cross out my ones place. Because I put my 8 into my 4, I put the 8 into the 2. Now I'm moving over to my 70. I have to put my 0 down here to show that that's 70. 7 times 4 is 28. 8 down, carry the 2. 
And then we have 7 times 2 plus 2 is 16. And now I can add. I have 2 plus 0 is 2. 9 plus 8 is 17. Carry my 1. I have 1 plus 1 is 2. Plus 6 is 8. And then a 1. So this is very important for story problems. I have 1,872 what? Well, let's look back. It asked me how many cans. So I have 1,872 cans. That's my final answer. If you don't label it the appropriate units such as cans, I will mark it wrong. That is important that we know what we're talking about in the real world story problems. So that is it. That is the skills that you must have for the test in order to do very well. I think everyone will be fine, but please watch this video maybe several times. Do some examples based on the ones I gave you and see if you can do them on your own with help of a parent. Okay, have a good night and good luck on our test.